one, discovery. You probably have a friend who talks about Stardew Valley a lot or had a past obsession. Coincidentally, one of the YouTubers you watched recently made some videos on Stardew Valley. So you decide to watch them and you think the game seems pretty cool. Stage 2, the Steam Summer Sale. December rolls around, sleigh bells are ringing, and the Steam Summer Sale has finally begun. You have a look at what games are on sale, and oh look, Stardew Valley, 50% off. You decide to get it since it's on special. Why not, right? It's not like you'll develop an addiction and accumulate over a thousand hours over a span of four years. That would be absurd. Stage 3, Beginnings. So you load up the game and create your very first farm. You probably make a character look like you, set your name as your actual name and not Blobo from my shows, and set your favourite thing as something normal. Once you discover that you can marry NPCs, you either go for one of the Mills or Shane. I don't know why old new players go after Shane. Soon enough, you split off into a specific area of the game that you enjoy. It could be mining, animal husbandry, or in my case, cheating on every single marriage candidate simultaneously. But you're not quite experienced enough to call yourself a pro. What's a fast farm without dying in the mines a few times and getting rejected at the flower dance? Stage 4, Addiction. There comes a time in every study player's life where they develop an insatiable hunger for the game. You play every chance you can get. On the bus, at school, I genuinely woke up an hour earlier than I needed to so that I could play Stardew Valley in the mornings before school. It was... a problem. Oh, I mean, you woke up early for school. This is not based on personal experience whatsoever. Yeah. You wrote a review on Stardew Valley for your year 12 media studies class, poured your heart and soul into it, and got a C. That was, that was you, not me. Stage 5, Community. After playing single player for a while, you realise that there's a multiplayer function. While you probably don't have any friends left because you ignored everyone's text during stage 4, you wonder if there are people making YouTube videos about Stardew. You find a load of different channels, and you probably find Unsurpassable Z's Stardew Valley Trials series, as well as the Stardew Valley Cup. Stage 6, The Wiki. Soon enough, you find the Holy Bible of Stardew Valley. George and Evelyn may worship Yoba, but us players worship The Wiki. I can't play Stardew Valley without having 10 tabs open, and I can't understand people who can. How are you supposed to know what to put in the soup at the luau, and the optimal egg hunt strategy? Stage 7, Speedrunning. After spending some time in the Stardew Valley community, you discover that speedrunning is a thing in this game. The game about taking the scenic crew and petting cute animals. Yep, this game has a speedrunning scene, and it's not small either. You probably discover Habu and the Hatmouse speedrun, and think about giving a go yourself. Either that, or you find the idea of racing against the clock way too stressful and prefer to spend your time fishing by the lake. Again, not, not speaking from personal preference or anything. <laughs> that would be stupid. Stage 8, Burnout. You have several hundred hours on your save file. You've maxed out your skills, married the person of your dreams, and sacrificed your children. You spend your days doing menial tasks just for the sake of burning time. Going to bed after 10am seems like a victory. It's a slow process, but Stardew Valley slowly gets phased out of your life. You go from playing 5 hours a day, to 1 hour, to a couple hours a week, until eventually you can't even remember when was the last time you played. You have no community center to complete, no big goal to work towards. What even is the point of playing? Stage 9, Mods. A few months pass by and you haven't thought about Stardew Valley for quite a while. That is, until you're browsing YouTube and see a Let's Play video. Stardew Valley Expanded. It didn't even occur to you that Stardew Valley could be modded, but it seems fun. Now, not everyone likes full game revamps like Stardew Expanded, 
but you probably tried a nice texture pack or UI mod or whatever this is. Personally, I just use the gender neutral pronouns mod and seasonal villager outfits. I just think they add a nice touch to the game and stop me from getting misgendered, which is always nice. Stage 10, Inner Peace. No matter what you do, you just can't relive the experience of opening the game for the first time again. Sometimes the nostalgia and memories are just too overwhelming. But eventually, you realise that it's okay. Sure, it would be awesome to open Stardew for the first time, but I would not like to return to my life back then. You may not be able to experience the first time you planted a parsnip, but you have the rest of your life to create new experiences. You've come a long way in your Stardew Valley journey. From building your first silo to building all four obelisks, a lot has changed. Not just the lad of your farm, but you too.